Well, hello everyone. A very warm welcome to you. It's Sean from Sean K Beauty and this is Sean K's Beauty Bar where we grab from the bar and discuss all things beauty. <laughs> very warm welcome to anybody who is new to my channel and to all my lovely subscribers thank you so much for trusting me <laughs> if you're new to my channel my name is Sean my background is microbiology and biochemistry um, I'm heavily saturated in science and I bring it here to beauty uh, if you have questions down below leave them I will answer your questions sometimes bringing them here on this platform Monday Wednesday and Friday if I feel like it it's something that all of us can evolve from if not we do one-on-ones which I've been doing outside of uh, the YouTube platform with many of you actually um, on Friday I couldn't do a video because guys I got my wisdom tooth taken out and how do I sit here and talk to you? Well, I am doped up on Tylenol because the pain is real if anybody has had their wisdom tooth taken out. <laughs> All right, so today's topic is about uh, knowing your acids and what they do. And the reason why I wanted to continue on in this acne series is because I'm getting a lot of questions from you all. One of the questions was, can you talk about skin purging after you've used a salicylic acid? And that is some of the topics um, that I feel is relevant, all of us can evolve from. So we're gonna tackle that today, including giving you a list of some AHAs and BHAs that you may wanna experiment with. Uh, nobody really does the PHAs. I saw like one or two of you said that you um, have, you prefer the PHAs. Um, for those who don't know what a PHA is, um, I talked about it in a previous video, I'll leave the card right here, but their molecular structure is a little bit bigger, in fact, much bigger than your, your uh, BHAs and your AHAs, so it absorbs less quickly into the skin, therefore less irritation than your you know, glycolic and your salicylic acids. So we're gonna talk about what you need to know about acids. Um, I'm gonna give you acceptable percentages because one of the things that I need you all to know too, um, as my friends here on this platform, is that a stronger percentage in acid does not make it better. And I talked about that in previous videos, right? Um, I also wanna talk about you know, pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to using these acids. And if you haven't used the acids before, this information would be useful to help you determine whether or not you want to try and use an acid. Now, my disclaimer before we really get into this video is I want you all to do patch testing right here in the middle of your elbow for three days. The reason why I say that is because we don't wanna go directly onto the face. I have been dealing with a few of you on here who have experienced chemical burns from using the Ordinary's chemical peel. Um, I'm not gonna get into that. You all know how I feel about the Ordinary with some of their products, so I'm not gonna go too deep into that. However, there is a disclaimer on the Ordinary's website that says that this should be used right by a professional. And we have a lot of people using strong peels in their homes. So again, I won't tackle that because that's not what this video is about, but let's get into your how-to guide on acids and what happens to the skin when you start using these products, things that you can expect. So let's get right into this. So let's talk about your AHAs and BHAs when it comes to skin purging. Uh, this was a question that was asked below and I'm going to talk about that. So a lot of the times the skin will get worse before it gets better, right? It's bringing those impurities to the surface. So when it's pulling all of that that is underneath the surface of the skin, you find your skin breaking out even more. The pigmentation looks even darker. Um, that tends to happen a lot with using your AHAs and BHAs. And with that being said, it does not have to be um, really bad if you decide to use your acids at a lower concentration. You don't have to deal with the flaking. You don't have to deal with the constant peeling going on when you use your acids at a lower concentration. Typically, uh, you know, and your salicylic acid can fall between a one and 2%. 
and your glycolic acid at 10%. Um, so you don't need to go any higher than that. I know there's so many different percentages out there. I know Mary Kay with their Clear Proof line, they use a 2% salicylic acid uh, in that system. And that really has helped many people who have suffered from acne and hyperpigmentation and they give you the whole kit and caboodle. They give you the mask and all of that to go along with this system. So yes, you do have individuals who have the, um, the, the breakout, the major breakout happen. Uh, the skin tends to be more sensitive. You also have the pigmentation looking much darker. You can also have flaking happening. Uh, when you're using higher concentrations of salicylic acid and glycolic acid. So you want to make sure, again, that we're doing patch testing so that we know what's going to happen to our face if we put this on. Make sure that you're, if you're really trying to step into this world of using your AHAs and BHAs, make sure you're looking at the percentages. Um, I know that a lot of companies will use amino acids along with a glycolic acid so that it's less irritating on the skin. So look for that in your um, products when you're going to buy your next glycolic acid serum or you know cleanser or toner whatever it is that you're going to use see if there's amino acids in there because then uh, that helps it to be less irritating and also look at the concentration now scientists also look at ph levels and that should fall between a three and a four so because this is an acid on the ph scale you know you have seven in the middle and everything that is acidic goes to the lower part of the pH scale, right, down to zero. And then anything that is alkaline goes all the way up the pH scale to 14. Our skin's acidic mantle is right there at a 5.5 if you're a woman and a 5.8 if you're a man. So you don't want to use soap and all of those products that have uh, drying agents in them like sodium lauryl sulfate. Um, which tends to go way up the pH scale. So they're using an acid here to help bring about uh, the peeling of the skin and using a salicylic and a glycolic acid, the molecules are much smaller, therefore penetrating the skin much quicker, therefore giving you that quick turnover, which means that when you have this knowledge, you don't need to go for something that has an exacerbated percentage behind that acid because if you have too high of a concentration with something that is already small enough in a molecule size to penetrate the skin, you're going to do more harm than good. So stronger doesn't necessarily mean better, right? All right, so your acids are not like retinol. Retinol can be a lot more irritating on the skin. Uh, really, these acids are getting off that top layer and then bringing about that cell repair. So you're looking at something that's less aggressive and some people prefer to go this route as opposed to going the retinol route. Um, again, you wanna look for products that are actually you know, coupled in with amino acids if you have super sensitive skin. I'm going to recommend the Oleic Henriksen Night Transformation Cream. Uh, this is even for the most sensitive of skin. You can definitely use this and you can find it at your nearby Sephora. I'll leave the price for it right here. Um, but again, you don't want to rush in with acids, right? And the thing I want you all to know too is you don't want to go day to day using this. You have to gradually work your system into this because we're talking about acids. So you want to go month to month before you start going into daily use of this. Um, and even though you may not see skin purging on day one or day two, you may see some skin purging happening on day four. You don't want to uh, do too much too quickly and then deal with the ramifications of adverse reactions happening. So work your way into it. Yes, dermatologists say that there is going to be, you know, some tingling and that's because that acid is penetrating the skin. But the thing is, you don't want burning, okay? We don't want burning and we don't want severe irritation happening to the skin. So um, again, month to month, work your way into that daily use, but don't find yourself going, uh, you know, day after day after day using this acid. Work your way gradually into this. 
So which one of these products really does yield the most dramatic results? And the answer is, I'm gonna give you guys some time to answer. Which one do you think? If you guess glycolic acid, then you've guessed it correct because that's the smallest molecule. And again, we did that in my previous video. That one yields the most dramatic results and also changes the texture of the skin. Now, here's the thing, you know, um, because cosmetics are not approved by the FDA, anything that claims to alter an individual in any way would have to be considered a drug. And we see glycolic acid in a lot of anti-aging products because it is a small molecule that penetrates quickly, brings about the results, the tech retexturizing of the skin, stimulating collagen, smoothing and smoothening out the skin and getting rid of um, unevenness to the skin. You don't see a lot of people talking about that like that because the FDA would have to approve that as a drug. And then that has to be prescribed to you, the consumer, because now it's a drug as opposed to a cosmetic. So people talk about the surface of what these AHAs and BHAs and you know PHAs do, but they don't really go into the depth of speaking about how this alters the skin's texture because anything that alters will have to get approval. Um, that is the strongest acid and that is gonna give you the most dramatic results because it is a smaller acid. So I do want you all to know that it does alter the appearance and the texture of your skin. And I shouldn't just say the appearance of it, it's the appearance and it does alter the texture of your skin, uh, thickening up that epidermis and that dermis. So, and we know that the dermis is deep within the skin. <laughs> All right, this next question is, do these acids, or do you think these acids have limitations? Dun, 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 dun. If you guessed yes, your answer is correct. Uh, these acids do have limitations. Uh, most of the time, when we're really talking about acids to the skin, they are minimizing the appearance of blotches, and they're also dealing with fine lines. Deep wrinkles is something that these acids will not do. You'll have to go to a dermatologist and either they will do, um, you know, a prescription of a retinol or they'll do fillers or laser treatment. Deep wrinkles is off the, the table. When you're in your 20s and 30s, these acids really work at their optimal. However, if you're above that, you can still use these acids. And I know dermatologists, sometimes, you know, they're verbiage could be somewhat controversial because I've seen women who use acids in their 40s and 50s and still get really great results without going into the retinol route but I, it depends on everyone's skin so um, most uh, of the time if there's really severe damage to the skin especially when you're talking about like sunspots and all of that stuff. I know my friend actually went and had laser treatment done because she just wanted it gone. And that is an effective treatment to get rid of, uh, you know, sunspots. But these acids work just as well to minimize the appearance of it. But again, they do have their limitations. So I want to be 100% uh, with you and that they're most effective, according to dermatologists, when you're in your 20s and your 30s. And they have treated many people who wanted to use an acid and the damage was so severe that it, it only could be when you have deep wrinkles using fillers or some sort of laser treatment in an effort to do that or some sort of retinol. Okay, friends, so what if you have back knee or you have, you know, those little small um, raises that happen on the back, these little small bumps that you end up on the back of having on the back of your arm. What do you do in that case? Do you go ahead and use a an abrasive salicylic acid scrub? Um, the answer is no. We don't want to cause irritation to the skin and you don't want something with microbeading in it because that will inflame that area. So what we want to do is we want to use uh, so, some body wash that has salicylic acid in it. Um, I will recommend the Neutrogena Body Clear Body Wash. 
um, that you can leave on for 15 minutes and just rinse it off. Or you can opt for the amlectin um, alpha hydroxy therapy. I will actually leave the um, prices right here and a link down below where you can purchase this at. And that will help you when you start having, you know, um, you know, body acne as well. If you're seeing that you are having issues on the decollete area and the neck, please feel free to bring that acid. I hate to say it like that, but bring your BHA or your AHA down the neck onto the decollete and make sure you have a body wash with salicylic acid in it. Leave it on for 15 minutes, rinse it off, and you're going to be golden. Stay away from anything that is going to be abrasive because we don't want micro tears on the skin or on the face. So <laughs> let's leave those alone. <laughs> All right, beautiful friends. And here is what I want to drive home, an SPF. When you start using acids and you start using brightening serums and brightening creams and you're bringing that into your routine, whether you use that at night or whether you use that during the day, you want an SPF. And uh, I recommend, you know, either Super Goop, which is really affordable. I know there's a lot of really good ones out there. In fact, even the children's sunscreen is good, though it leaves a white cast. Or you can go with Shiseido. Um, I literally just bought the Shiseido sunscreen and I love it. I think it is an SPF of 50 somewhere there about. Now, me, I'm a huge proponent. You all know this. When you're using brightening serums and you're using acids, use those at nighttime because there is no interference from the sun. And cell regeneration and repair is heightened at nighttime. Acids and stuff in the daytime, unless you want to, right? Um, when the sun has the potential of interfering with the process. So that's what I've got to give to you all today. Again, you all know I love to give it in small nuggets. I don't want to give you a lot of information in one video because it can be overwhelming. And when we get too much information, we retain nothing. I'll just be honest. So I prefer to give you it in small nuggets. So just a quick recap. We want to make sure that we're using an SPF for when we start getting into these acids. Um, stronger does not mean better. You will experience some skin purging if you're using a stronger acid. If you use lower concentrations, the likelihood of irritation is minimal. If you feel tingling, that is expected, especially when you're using an AHA and a BHA because the molecules are smaller. And you want to be very knowledgeable about doing patch testing in the middle of your arm before putting this on the face. And uh, remember, 1% to 2% with your salicylic acid, 10% with your glycolic acid. Go, you know, month to month with this. Don't try to rush into this before, you know, going straight day to day to day to day to day. That I don't advise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't advise that at all. It doesn't have to be flaking. Like I said, if you use it at a lesser concentration, you don't have to worry about the flaking. Amino acid. Look for amino acid uh, being paired with your glycolic acid so that uh, you experience less irritation. Knowing that this is not going to get rid of deep, deep wrinkles, guys, it has its limitations. Um, glycolic acid is giving you the most dramatic um, results. Um, but it's not for everybody, okay? It's not for everybody. So hopefully you all found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave your questions. I welcome your questions. <laughs> I welcome your questions. Leave them down below. The discussion continues. Remember, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we will be covering this acne series until we are done with all the topics that you all want me to cover and tackle. I love you all so much. I will see you in my next one and take care of yourself and be kind to one another. Ciao for now.